What's up everybody? We are here in Lyndhurst, New Jersey with our friend Christina and she is going to show us everything there is to know about the Northcott Warehouse. Let's get started. Like what do they say in MT MTV Cribs? I like, don't know. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to my crib. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Christina, so give us a little background on yourself and on Northcott as we are getting our tour started. I'm the Vice President of Marketing and I've been with Northcott for eight years. Worked on a few pretty cool projects for the company. My first big project was Banyan Batiks. So shortly later, I launched Figo Fabrics. Okay. It's more of our modern and contemporary division for Northcott. Okay. Crazy to think that five years ago, I was starting something from sure, the ground Sure, that now up. is where it is today. So let's get our tour started and we'll start off in receiving. Okay. Okay, so this is our receiving area. This is what a normal shipment looks like when it comes in. We probably receive and ship out both ways, 16 to 20,000 yards a day. You know what, it also depends on, on the day. Some days there's more, some days this whole area is filled with boxes. There's literally no place to like move. As soon as we receive them, we break them open and we see what's inside. When you get a roll of fabric, are you getting 20 of the same roll usually? Yeah. So you're stacking like a pallet of the same fabrics, right? Yeah. Like that's the same print, that's the same print. And then these are the same prints in a different color. We could possibly have additional prints from the collection, but it's usually the same prints. So we're trying to keep yeah. things together. Like things together. Okay. What's the next step? Does it go straight to rolling or? Well, the first thing that we do is we print out work orders. If anything is meant to stay on the tube, that stays on the tube because, you know, we do have customers in manufacturing and some smaller customers that just want it on the tube for whatever for reason. For whatever reason. We reserve that for them and then we cut everything else. Pre-cuts, everything. We take the work order that has uh, the pre-cuts on it, we put that aside to make okay. the pre-cuts. Basically, our main goal is get it in and get it out. So the first thing okay. that we do is we receive it, we figure out how much we need to cut, we prepare the bolts, and then we start cutting, and then we start shipping. Cool, well let's, uh, let's see the process. Once we do the receiving, the next step would be preparing the bolts for the yardage, for double enrolling. Okay. And the team will basically label all of our bolts with the corresponding fabric on the skids. Once the labels are ready, the bolts go from over here to this machine over here, which okay. is a pretty standard machine that our industry uses. Uh -huh. The bolt slides in, and then the fabric at a high speed rolls onto the bolt. And the cutters are great. They know exactly where to cut it. Then an electric scissor goes across. They're good to go. I don't know about you guys, but watching this, it's like I could stand here like for hours. It's like mesmerizing, right? It's like yeah. therapeutic. He actually has a spreadsheet that will list how many eighths he has to cut, how many 15 yard bolts he has to cut. Judging by the amounts of pallets that are here, I'm like, man, this guy's gotta be here 24 hours a day, right? Because yeah. it's like, there's so much fabric that's waiting to go on a bolt. It's great when we have uh, new collections that come in, because the main goal is to get them in and get them out. So they're just ripping them through them. Basically, yeah. Okay. The next step would be to bring this whole cart over to our wrapping station. And this kind of shows the quantity that are on those rolls. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it's a lot, a lot of fabric. fabric. A lot of fabric. It's brought over to this machine, you said. Yep, they're basically fed through this machine. It's like a bear belt. Yeah, it's kind of like a bakery for fabric. It just gets <laughs> put through. <laughs> it just it comes out the other end and it comes it's done. Comes out the oven on the other end, cooked. Can I do one? Puedo hacer uno? See? See? I'm taking over her job here. That's good. Good? Can I have your job? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it basically will uh, shrink wrap it. I, I don't even know how to sure. explain it. Shrink it. This is the one I did right here. So everybody, all the viewers can see. Looks good. Oh. <laughs> She's like, this one's wrong. She's like, what's this air bubble? But yeah, as you can see, they're getting stacked by collection, by skew, and then they're put into a staging area, which is the next step. We go upstairs, we grab our picking tickets, and then we'll start picking an order. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so now we're upstairs and we're gonna speak with Emily who prepares our picking tickets. So Emily, why don't you tell us about the process for the picking tickets? Yes, yeah, so we have um, the daily picking tickets which are orders that are normally placed all the time throughout the day. We have the monthly picking tickets, so each month we have a certain number of collections that go out. We print out pretty much the full month's collections, split up and everything, and then as goods come in and they're prepared and ready, we send the orders down to the warehouse to get filled and shipped. Okay, so we'll grab these picking tickets and let's go pick some orders. 
Seems like, like your newer collections are coming in here. Obviously, those are the ones that are going out the fastest. So you just leave those on pallets and start from there. Is that yep. how it works? So basically, we have just a little bit left over for reorders and for last minute orders, but mostly everything kind of comes in and goes out. Your warehousing side of this is more like your your Stonehenge or things that your regular reorderables yeah, rather than your collections. Yeah, basics. exactly. All of our basics. And we talk to our, our consumers all the time about this because you place the orders in whatever country they're coming from, mm -hmm. right? It takes however many months. It comes over on a boat and then it lands here. It's not like we can just call and say, hey, can you send me five more collections of that? It doesn't exist. It is kind of like a hard thing to imagine when you're the end user. Uh -huh. That's why tours like this are great. Why can't but I get more? I know, right? <laughs> but you know, just to give you guys perspective, like we're working on stuff that's gonna be released in January, 2024 right now. So the life cycle of a collection is so much longer than sure. what anyone. So much longer than the imagine. short side of it of what, what exactly. a consumer sees, right? Okay guys, so we're here with Isabella. Isabella is the chief order picker here at Northcott and she's going to walk us through what the order picking process looks like. So, bienvenida y vámonos. <laughs> so this right here, so she has a order form that is the new collections that have come into the warehouse. Por eso es que está todavía en, en el piso, se puede decir. What we're gonna do is she's gonna check and see what the order needs and then pull the order in our little shopping cart. Okay, ¿a quién nos pide ese patrón? So, item number plus it says color number. Sí, nosotros sabemos ya que es ese color. She already knows what it is because you've been doing this. <laughs> so order says you need three bolts of 15 yards. So she checks not only to make sure it's the right color, the right collection, but also the right quantity of yards per bolt. Another bolt of 15. The last one, they are just barely finishing. So we're gonna come over here and get the last bolt. We got our last piece of the order that we need. She puts her initials on there to show that it's her that did the order and make sure that it's good. The next step of the process, we're gonna scan it in and basically do a double check. And then she scans it in and makes sure that it's the right bolt that corresponds to what the picking ticket is. Waiting on slow computers like everyone else. Okay, so it gives her the green light that everything's good. She clicks submit and then a screen comes just popped up on the screen that says, are you sure you want to save? At that point, she puts them all on carts that will then go over to the packing department so the packing department can pack and, and ship. Mucho <laughs> gracias. The person check that's packing the order has checked them, and then they run them through the system, they've checked them, and then it gets to this point, and so another person is checking them. So you're having, you know, three checks to make sure what's getting to us as a, as a quote store is actually what we're supposed to be receiving. No one is perfect, but right. we try our best to keep everything organized and, and accurate. So everything is packed into these boxes that are the perfect size for bolts. Once a box is ready, it gets rolled down, it gets strapped, this comes down the line, and then the shipping label is made. So guys, we're here with Miriam. Miriam's gonna show us the process of, they've come down the line and how she goes through the shipping process. So she brings the order down and she picks up the picking ticket to see how many different labels she's gonna need, because one for each box. So this one is a two box order. So, tengo que ver el peso. So it's on a scale right here. She needs to see the weight of the box, obviously. She already knows the dimensions of the box because they use the same boxes, so she has those memorized. She can just look at it, and she's super fast at it. Uh. So now at this point, she's, she's printing out the labels that are going on the boxes. And she has to check and make sure that the picking ticket address and the address on the actual label are correct, even though that's what it said it was. And pongo el label la caja uno, y le pongo el label, label la caja dos. Label two, box two. Y ya está. Terminado. Muchas gracias. Okay. <laughs> that's it. On to the next one. Now we have some more fun stuff for you. Let's go see how pre-cuts are made. Oh, cool. All right, let's go. All right guys, so I'm here with Sam. Sam is the pre-cut manager here at Northcott, and he's gonna walk us through the whole process from basically from fabric to finished product. So basically what we have on the shelf here, this is all the marketing material. That kind of tells us, you know, what fabric we're gonna be cutting, okay. uh, what's the rotation or the layers of the material. And then basically we get like a, a work order, tells us our, our fabric, the yardage that we have, how many pieces we're gonna need. From there, we're gonna take the material and we're gonna get it to the cutting table. Okay. If it's an ROT, a roll on two, we're gonna put it up on, on the rack. What's the difference between why you would do it from a bolt or from an ROT? So, we're doing the strip rolls. Okay, so, so you want it to It's already it creased and folded, so we don't we don't have to fold it. You know, if we're doing tiles or chips, we'd put it definitely put it on the rack, roll it out, that way you don't have to worry about ironing or anything cool. like that. Cool, okay. 
tell us what he's doing. He's getting ready to do strip rolls then, obviously, Correct. right? So we're actually laying the material. You know, each one is also a certain amount of pieces. Uh -huh. So so that's definitely important because if you... Uh, sure, you if know, somebody's you planning know, on a pattern with 40 pieces right. and it comes with 38, yeah. we're, I'm calling you next time that happens. So okay? we <laughs> counted a million times before we... Uh, okay. So basically from this point, we're gonna cut it, put it on this table with the casters, and then we're gonna roll it to the pinking machine. Depending on what we're cutting, we program it, whether it's for tiles, for chips, for the strip rolls. It goes onto this cutting table. It'll go through the machine. Once it comes to the other side, if it's tiles, for example, we give it a, we give it a turn. Oh, because it's cut the other direction. Yep, right. and then it'll ah. go back through, and then you have your, your completed square. Very cool, okay. When you guys are cutting, so do you know like how many, how many yeah. items are you cutting a day? We were doing chips earlier, and I mean, you know, one cut of chips, you're getting like 300. Jeez, okay, yeah. so you're cutting, and then how many of those sets are you doing in a day? Chips, I mean, it can probably over a thousand. You know. Wow, so you guys are cutting out you know, thousands of pre-cuts a day. Correct. Right? What's the next step? So next, it's gonna go uh, to the ladies here. If it's fat quarters, make the folds, put the bundle together, get the, get the marketing materials on there. Once the, the marketing materials and everything is on there, it'll ready to be shrink wrapped and okay. pretty much. And then it goes out the door. Correct. Very cool. So then behind us here, so these are 10 inch squares, five inch squares yeah. that are waiting to basically just be correct. finished and then shrink wrapped, correct. right? So on the back, it'll have the marketing material with the correct rotation of the fabric. This is the fat quarters, which are being folded now. Well, Sam, thank you so much for showing us this process here. And uh, for everybody here in this warehouse has talked about like, you know, we check things two and three and four times. Like the rotation's right, yeah. the colors are right, the labeling's right. So we appreciate the attention to detail because it really shows in the product. So Absolutely. awesome. Thank you. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Okay, so that's pretty much it. You've seen how our pre-cuts are made. You've had a nice tour of the warehouse. Yes. We really appreciate having you guys here and coming by and showing everyone what we do. Well, thank you. And it's, it's so cool to see the behind the scenes of it because a consumer walks into the quilt store and they see fabric on the shelves. But seeing it from this side of like, hey, it's coming from other countries, it's coming through. There's so many different people here that have a huge part in what happens. We're really appreciative of you showing us the behind the scenes. And guys, if you liked the video, make sure that first of all, you're checking out Northcott and all the sub companies, right, <laughs> as well. And that you're liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and share this with your friends. Let them see how this process works. And everybody give a thumbs up for our friend here and for everybody else that's been here at the warehouse. Bye, everybody. Bye.